Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to PagerDuty Community Demo Roundup. I'm Mandy Walls, DevOps Advocate here at PagerDuty. With me today is James Pickles. He's a solutions consultant based in the UK, right, James? That's right, yeah, based in London. Excellent. Love, I, I've been to London. I have my underground sign here in the back. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get going. We're talking about incident management transformation today. Um, so we hope to help folks through some new features on the platform and, and do a great demo here. So if you wanna fire up the slides, we'll start with a couple of announcements for the next couple of things that we're gonna be doing for you over the next couple of weeks. Things are pretty busy around here for the fall. Um, next week, uh, we've got, uh, it's in two weeks, September 12th, uh, Chris will be running a, uh, will be joining us for a um, talk on digital operations resiliency. So he's joining us from BT, and then we have some folks from PagerDuty to talk through that. That will be on September 12th, and it will be this same time. So hopefully this time frame works for folks. If you can, you want to sign up there, you can click on your uh, QR code there, or we'll put the link in the in the notes there. And then following after that, we've got Future Proof Your Operation Center. This one will be a PagerDuty webinar with some of our product folks, and that will be on uh, Tuesday, September 10th. So sign up for that one. This one will be talking about uh, using some of our AI ops features for uh, resiliency. And, and there's some amazing features in the AI ops package. So if you haven't seen that one or aren't looking at it yet, you want to take a look at that. Frank is really good at taking us through all kinds of good demos. So uh, you want to join that one and ask him questions. You can sign up with the QR code there as well. And then next, if you ha want to have a story, you would love, we would, we want to hear from you, honestly. We want to hear how you are leveraging PagerDuty, how you're leveraging Jelly, Rundeck, all of our stuff combined, the operations cloud to help your team with your resiliency, with your transformations for your incident response and automation and customer service operations. If you'd like to chat with us and be highlighted in our community spotlight, hit that QR code, give us a shout. You can also email our team or community-team at pagerd.com. We love to hear from you and uh, we want to be able to share your story. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to James and uh, he's going to show us some great stuff today. Okay. Thanks, Mandy. So yeah, hi everyone. Um, as Mandy has already said, my name is James Pickles. I'm a solutions consultant with PagerDuty. Um, and today I am going to talk to you about how PagerDuty can help you to systematically manage your incidents throughout their whole life cycle um, and ultimately start to uh, protect your business from risk. And the focus is really on, on that incident management transformation solution, like Mandy said. So I think this is a topic that is at the top of mind for, for a lot of organizations at the moment, given what happened recently with the, the global outage from CrowdStrike. Um, I think this is really coming to the fore of people's thoughts. Obviously, for us at PagerDuty, it's always at the front of our thoughts. We're talking to, to customers day in, day out, talking to potential customers all the time as well. And we often hear from organizations that feel like they suffer from reliability issues with their, with their current incident management solution. And this can actually have some pretty serious consequences, right? There can be a risk of customer churn. There can be revenue loss, even reputational damage. And those can be pretty hard to come back from sometimes. So when we do talk to them about these kind of themes, um, there's often recurring challenges that we hear coming through. Um, resolving things takes too long, right? Problem resolution is a time consuming process and it often gets repetitive as well. It's not uncommon for the same things to keep coming back again and again. There's often manual steps involved um, and a lack of standardized processes and tools across various different teams in the organization. So all of this kind of makes coordinating that response very difficult and obviously wastes valuable time and resources in the process. So this kind of fragmentation of, of tools, um, fragmentation of processes across the organization, um, it increases complexity, it increases technical debt. And it actually creates this kind of vicious cycle, right? Where people are constantly in this reactive mode, firefighting mode, and they don't actually have the bandwidth to, to try and learn from their previous mistakes and learn from what's happened before. So everything just gets, gets worse and worse. 
And of course, that then exposes them to more risk from, from these kind of manual error stream processes um, that happen throughout the incident life cycle. So if any of these things sound familiar to you, then you're in the right place. And what I'm going to now focus on for, for, for this session is PagerDuty's incident management transformation solution, which can actually help you to modernize and scale your operations with a platform that can actually start to automate the management of both major and minor incidents. So this means that we're there to support you right from the early detection phase of the incidents through the triage, diagnosis, remediation, right up to the, to the post-incident uh, phase and learning from those issues that you've seen before with tools like Jelly that can help gain insights from incident analysis across the organization. We've also got generative AI that, that can help you as a, a virtual team member. It's your assistant from the start to the end of the incident lifecycle. And of course, being PagerDuty, we integrate seamlessly with all your existing software stack, uh, making sure that teams are more efficient and more effective wherever it is that they are working. So what does this look like in, in the context of, of an incident, right? So we, we think of incidents with various different phases, um, as you can see outlined on, on the slide here. And we start over on the left-hand side right from that initial detection, right? So PagerDuty will be ingesting signals from lots of different sources, whether it's coming from your monitoring and observability tools, from your security tools, your CRCD tools, or even from your customers themselves. You know, sometimes you do hear about issues from them before you pick things up yourself. And we actually start to make sense of all this data before we even get you involved, right? So we use AI ops to start filtering out the noise, making sure that we're correlating events that are related, leaving you with actionable things that you can act on. And then when we need to mobilize a response, we make sure we do it in a targeted way. We get the right people involved at the right time and avoid that scenario where you're just trying to get a room full of people and, and you end up with lots of people in the room, but nobody knows what anyone's doing and wasting a lot of people's time because not everyone needs to be there. And then through the rest of the stages of the incident, we've got various different tools and capabilities that can help you with that ongoing management and ongoing response, whether it's using automation to help you perform diagnostic checks automatically, whether it's using AI to help suggest remediation actions to you, or whether it's giving you tools and capabilities to actually start to form some of the processes in a, in a streamlined and effective manner. So things like stakeholder communication, making sure you're being transparent with both your internal uh, stakeholders and your customers as well. And then once you do resolve that issue, we want to make sure that you actually can take any learnings from that that you can and feed that back into the organization so that you don't see the same thing again, making sure you're performing post-incident reviews, but then combining that with your analytics capabilities and closing off that kind of feedback loop. So you have a fost you're fostering a culture of continuous learning and improvement. And, and ultimately, as an organization, you want to move from that kind of chaotic reactive state that I referenced at the start through to a, a preventative, more organized, um, proactive approach. Okay, so that's a quick summary of, of the solution and what it is we're trying to achieve. What does it actually look like in practice? So I'm gonna take you through a bit of a demo now. We're gonna to touch on some of those areas that I, that I referenced. Of course, I've not got time to take you through the whole platform today, but I think we're gonna to, going to touch on some of the major themes that, that I think you'll find interesting. So over on this screen, I've got a couple of different screens up actually. So let me just take you through it. On the left-hand side there, you can see I've got my, my browser window up. I'll probably spend most of the time in there. You can see I've got my PagerDuty web UI open, but I do have on the, on the right-hand side, I've got my phone as well. We'll spend a little bit of time in the mobile app for those of you who aren't aware, we do have a best-in-class mobile app. Um, it has pretty much perfect feature parity between web UI and app, so you really can respond on the go. You're not tied to your laptop. Um, I encourage you to check it out on the iOS App Store. If you're interested, it does have a really good rating. Um, but what I need to do then is trigger off an incident. We're going to have to have something go wrong, and then we'll use that as the basis to explore the platform and, and some of these capabilities. So with that in mind, 
Over here, I have on this browser tab, a customer facing application. And you can imagine if we had customer Jane who wants to log in and access her account. And unfortunately, as she tries to do so, you can see she's getting back some kind of unknown authentication error. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but my phone, as you can see on screen, is, is already going off. So PagerDuty is doing its thing. It's mobilizing that response immediately. Now, I haven't actually shared my sound, so you can't hear what's happening, but voice on the other end of the line, giving me a quick summary of, of what's happened, what the impacted service is, but crucially, giving me an opportunity to initiate my response immediately. So I'm going to hit four, which is me acknowledging the fact that there is an issue. And actually, as we go back to the app there, you'll see it will turn from a red to an amber state. So it's gone from a, a triggered to an acknowledged state. So that's me taking ownership of the situation, lets everybody else know that I'm aware of it. But also it's going to stop any escalation paths that we have in place, because, of course, if I wasn't available for, for whatever reason, we would want that to escalate to someone else and make sure we have those fallback mechanisms in place so that when there is a problem, we make sure someone knows about it. Just looking at my notification drawer, you can see that as well as receiving that phone call, I've got a push notification, text message, multiple communication channels that we can use to make sure we always contact you. Also email, of course, and, and we've got WhatsApp coming soon as well, which is really exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up on my phone and take a quick look. Imagine I was away from my desk, maybe I'm out for my lunchtime walk or something. Now, I have all the information I need in here and all the action that I might need to take. Um, I won't run the whole demo on the phone. I will switch over to the browser in a second. But first thing I might wanna check is actually see what, what's forming this incident. What are the various different alerts that have gone into giving me the issue that I'm faced with right now? So if I scroll down to my alert section here, I can open it up. And this is an example of that AI ops in action that I referenced at the start. So even before I'm involved, AI Ops is performing analysis and doing event correlation for me so that once I am involved, I can focus my efforts. So in this scenario, you can see I've got multiple alerts that have been grouped. But what that really means for me is I'm not now getting drowned with notifications. I don't have eight separate issues to look at and try and work out where I need to put my attention first. I've got one thing. These are all related. I don't lose the context but I can focus my efforts on, on what to do now. And of course, while this problem is ongoing, our monitoring is going to keep telling us that there's a problem. So we're going to keep receiving alerts, right? They're not going to go away. But because we have AI ops, we know we can keep correlating and grouping. So I can focus on fixing the problem and not getting drowned with notifications. And actually, while we're talking about AI ops, I'll just switch over to, to my browser now. So over in the PagerGT web UI, you can see here, I've got the same issue that I was just looking at on my phone. And this is assigned to me. This is the service that I'm on call for. But if I expand this out to all, um, all issues, you can see there's another issue that's been raised. And this is actually quite an interesting one. And I'm gonna spend a moment to look at this because I've just talked to you about the benefits of AI ops and alert grouping and how it allows me to focus. But if we look at this one, this has also got some alert grouping going on, but in a slightly different way. So as I open this one up now, this is a problem that seems to have happened on a Postgres database cluster. And if you look at the top, the first thing you'll notice is it says here, multi-service group, 10 alerts originating from multiple services. So AI Ops is now intelligent enough to actually expand out the scope of its correlation, not from just a single service, but from a grouping of multiple different related services. And if I just draw your attention to this section here, you can see impacted services, Postgres, the database I, I just referenced, this is the source service, but there's also a couple of other services which are clearly dependent services that also have alerts that have been correlated onto this service. So what's actually going on here? Well, if we scroll down to the alerts table, you can see here all of the various different services that are involved. So the alerts themselves and where they was originally directed to. But if we look at the summary of all these alerts, it becomes clear what's happened. So clearly the Postgres database went down and we received alerts on this service to tell us that. Now, after probably a little bit of a time lag, some of those dependent services that require that database started to get alerts raised on them to say that they can't connect to the database. 
And PagerDuty is intelligent enough to realize that those are correlated to the initial problem that we saw. So it's going to catch those events downstream, pull them back upstream into the source service. So this cross-service correlation really takes noise reduction to the next level. It means that instead of multi, uh, instead of notifying multiple teams that there's a problem, it's only notifying the team that needs to actually fix the problem. And, and again, while we're talking about noise reduction and alert correlation, AIOps isn't just about grouping things. It's about making intelligent decisions about whether or not I even need to know about something. So if I go up to my alerts table, we can see, and, and in this section, you can actually see all of the alerts as they're flowing through PagerDuty and what's happening. But I'll just scroll a little bit further down and draw your attention to a couple of alerts down here. Because interestingly, you can see there that I've got some alerts that came through, but they never actually created a problem. They never triggered an issue, never notified anyone. And this is AI Ops taking a look at these alerts and saying, hey, we think this is just a false alarm. We think this is going to auto resolve itself in a couple of minutes. So therefore, we're not going to create an incident. We're not going to notify you. And of course, lo and behold, these did go on and auto resolve themselves. Now, rest assured, had they not auto resolved within a couple of minutes, I would have got notified and we would have followed the usual kind of incident response process. But in this case, it was a false alarm. We identified it as such and nobody got nobody got bothered. Okay, going back to the incident at hand. So I'm just going to go and open this up. So I've been notified about what's going on. AI Ops is, is already helping me out, streamlining my initial response. At this point, one of the first things I'm probably going to want to do is find out a bit more about what's happened. So what's what's happened here? And I might typically have a run book or a playbook with some steps that I need to follow to start performing. Uh, diagnostic tests and diagnostic checks to, to better understand what's happened. But actually, and the eagle-eyed amongst you might have already spotted this, PagerDuty can get one step ahead and already execute these checks so that by the time I'm notified, I have the results of them ready and waiting for me. So over on the right-hand side here, you can see in my notes section, we've got the results of a set of health checks that have been run already. Um, in this case, on an underlying Kubernetes cluster that sits behind this service. And it doesn't take a, a technical expert to see a lot of those checks are coming back with a big red cross. Um, so clearly, there's something unhealthy with that cluster there. So within seconds of, of being notified, I can open this up, see the results of those checks, and straight away have an idea of where the problem might lie. Now, using PagerDuty automation in this way can really help speed up that initial triage and diagnosis phase of an incident. So it might take me 10, 15, 20 minutes, even half an hour potentially to run some of these checks, but PagerDuty can do that for me and have them all ready and waiting for me by the time I'm notified. Another really common example of what, what people might do here is maybe just pulling some ap application logs and, and pulling them into the incident as well. And if we actually go to my automation actions log here, because putting a full log output in my notes section isn't going to be particularly aesthetically pleasing, is it? Um, but we can attach longer output into the log here. So you can expand it here and you can see I've now got all of my uh, applicable logs. I can have a look through there, see if there are any errors, see if there's any indication as to what's happened. And again, saves me from SSHing onto a remote machine somewhere and, and tailing those logs myself. Now, I mentioned um, when I was talking about um, one of the slides there about how PagerDuty integrates seamlessly with your existing tech stack. And one of the crucial integrations that we would consider in this scenario is your ITSM integration. So we want to make sure that we have a, rec uh, a record in your system of record, making sure that we're keeping it up to date as everything progresses. And one of the things that PagerDuty can do is just take care of that for you. So you see here, I've got a corresponding service now record already created and linked to the PagerDuty incident. And if I go and take a look at that, you'll see that it's not only created the corresponding record, but it's actually going to update it with information as, as things happen. So if we scroll down in this service now record, you can see we've already got the results of those um, diagnostic checks that we ran. 
And throughout the life cycle of the incident, this is going to continually be kept up to date. So what that means is you actually end up with records that have meaningful information in them rather than something that's just open and closed when the incident gets resolved. But what's more than that is that this is a full bi-directional sync as well. So for the teams that are working in service now, if they want to start collaborating with the technical teams in pager duty, they can do so. And interestingly here, you can see I've already got some custom fields from pager duty that have synced information through to service now. And actually one of the pieces of information that has been pulled out of the alert by AI ops, saved into a custom field and then synced over into, into service now here. So that's the impacted region there at the top. And of course, as you'd expect, this works the other way as well. So if I was maybe on the service desk team or the customer services team, and I started to realize that we've actually got a serious number of customers now impacted by this, I can update my field here, number of users impacted, and I can update the record and that's gonna sync back across to page duty. So let me just update this here in service now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those custom fields has a two way sync. So if I go back into pager duty and let's take a look at the timeline. Timeline for those who don't know is, is your audit trail of everything that's happened on, on an incident. So anything that happens from the very first alerts that come through, any actions that are taken, any event rules or automation that fires, it will all be automatically logged and tracked on your incident timeline. Um, right here, I'm just going to give that another second to sync across. And you can see there, that custom field has been updated, as you'd expect, as I said would happen. Interestingly, that's actually triggered something else to happen. Now, what it's done is it's triggered an incident workflow via a conditional trigger to go and perform some kind of other action. So in this, in this case, what's happened is we have a, a field that we're using to track how many users we think are impacted. Now I've set up a workflow with a condition attached to say, when the number of impacted users gets above a certain threshold, I want to automatically post information to my status page to start putting word out to our, to our end users that we have a problem. Because at, at some point we're gonna to need to do that. So let's use custom fields and custom triggers to automate that for us. And of course, with PagerDuty's status page capabilities, this combines really nicely to then automatically notify all of your customers or subscribers that use your status page. So if I go over to my status page, as I have open on this browser tab here, and I'll just give it a quick refresh. And you can see now we have this issue that some customers are facing problems logging in. So what that does is it obviously puts the notice on the page, but anybody who's subscribed to either the page or the service within the page is going to get the automatic update. And the reason this is so important is because, it, well, multiple reasons in reality. First of all, ticket deflection, right? So if people start realizing there's a problem, they're going to start contacting you, raising support tickets, calling your customer services teams. They're then going to get swamped in noise and it has knock on effects throughout the organization. But also customer satisfaction, because if you're if you're wanting to use an app and you try and do something and it doesn't work, you're going to get really frustrated. If someone gets ahead of it and notifies you it's not working, you might be mildly annoyed, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to go and use it. So all of these together mean getting ahead of the curve and communicating with your customers, whether it's, it's internal customers or external, um, is, is going to help the organization um, from, a, from a kind of trust standpoint, but also uh, an actual reality of, of ticket deflection and the financial implications that go with that. Um, the status page itself can also be used to proactively communicate things like maintenance windows with your customers as well. So you can see in, in this page, we've actually got an upcoming maintenance window um, in September. So we're putting the word out ahead, letting people proactively know what's going on. So you're really going to increase that visibility and trust with your customers. Okay, going back into our incident. So We've had our diagnostic checks come back. We've got a bit of an understanding of where the problem might lie, though we don't know how we're going to remediate it yet. We're seeing a large number of users coming through that are impacted. We know that customers can't access their accounts, so thereby we're probably losing revenue. 
maybe at this point we decide that we want to declare this as a major incident. So you can see at the moment, this has been automatically categorized as a P2 here. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up to a P1. So I'm going to change my priority there. Now that action in and of itself is not particularly interesting or exciting, but what's happening in the background, as you may have guessed, is a little bit more interesting because again, we have another workflow that has now triggered, which is our major incident workflow. And this is a, a, an example of how we really help you to structure and manage the incident response process in a far more structured and consistent way. So with these workflows that will fire automatically anytime we have a major incident, we make sure that certain actions that we want to happen are always going to happen. We're not relying on a human going through a checklist and manually doing these things, which could both be time consuming and something might get missed. And again, if I scroll down to the timeline, we can actually see the outline of, of these steps that have happened through this workflow. So down here, you can see I, I raised it from a P2 to a P1, which triggered my major incident workflow. First thing we did was we spun up a dedicated incident Slack channel for this incident. So this is a really common thing to do when you, when you do have incidents that escalate, create a dedicated channel. So from an audit purposes, it's really great to have everything in a single location. And we'll, we'll go into the channel later and we'll touch a bit more on that. And it also adds all the responders automatically into that channel too, as you'd expect. Uh, the next thing it's done is it's added uh, a couple of people from specific teams that we know we always want to have involved in major incidents. So someone from the ops leads team, someone from our customer support team has been looped in. The next thing it's done there is actually added someone in with a designated role for the incident. So roles and responsibilities is a really important part in running an effective incident response process. Now, we actually have a lot of uh, freely available content and information on how you can run a really effective response process that's completely decoupled from any tooling. It's, it's all process driven. So if you're interested in that, um, it's response.pagerduty.com. Highly suggest you check it out. It will give you lots and lots of useful information on how you can structure your response process in your organization. And it's nothing to do with being a PagerDuty customer. It will help any, any organization. But one of the key parts is having defined roles and responsibilities. Um, so in this case, we've pulled Logan in as an incident commander. That means he can focus on one thing and one thing only, which is running the incident itself. He's not going to get sidetracked with having to send out communications, not going to get sidetracked with doing any technical resolution or investigation or diagnostics. He has one job and he's going to focus on that one job. So having these really well-defined roles and responsibilities in times of chaos and panic will actually help bring order, calm and structure to the response process. And I'll touch a little bit more on this in a minute when we go into Slack as well. Next thing you can see here is that we've automatically added some subscribers or stakeholders to the incident. So multiple different teams have been added. And these are typically the teams that you want to give visibility. You want to give them communication about what's going on, but they're not going to have any involvement in the, in the technical response. So in this case, we've added our security team, our customer services team, and our exec team. So they'll continue to be updated as the incident progresses. And then we've actually already pushed out an automatic update to those teams here, just to let them know what's going on. Next thing we've done here is created a conference bridge. So in this case, a Teams meeting, added everyone into it that needs to be into it. And then the final thing that we've done there is actually just automatically create a Jira issue so we can start tracking any follow-ups if we, if we need them. So that's not an exhaustive list of the type of actions you might have in your incident workflows, but it's a really con common starting point. And actually, as I move over into Slack in a minute, you'll, you'll start to see some other things that have happened as well. So why don't I, I go ahead and do that? I've, I've mentioned it a few times, but I do have my Slack open over here. Now, so far, I've spent the majority of this demo on, on my mobile app or in the PagerDuty web UI. But the reality is, uh, in practice, most people are going to be either working in Slack or, or of course, Microsoft Teams, if, if that's what your organization uses. So we bring all of the PagerDuty functionality and capabilities into those tools to allow you to work from wherever it is you're already working. Now, there's a couple of things that have happened in here so far. So up at the top here, 
we've got our major incidents channel. So this is a, a global channel for the entire company. And this is where we just post stakeholder type updates. So you can see our workflow actually already posted an update into this channel. So everybody can have visibility into what's happening. And it automatically pulls in information like what's the impacted region? What's the conference URL for people that want to join? What's the dedicated Slack channel if anybody wants to follow along and see what's happening? And also we can do advanced Slack actions too, like pin it to the top of the channel. So we've got easy and quick reference if anybody needs it. Now down here, you can see we've got the dedicated incident channel that was spun up. So this is our dedicated channel where all of the responders will be and start collaborating the response for this incident. You can see at the top there, we've got outlined who's running it. So Logan is in charge. And actually at this point, maybe we uh, assign a role and you can see we have three different roles defined that we always try to assign in, in our response process. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in Colin as my scribe. So I'm gonna save that. Now that's not just updating a piece of metadata, right? That's not just saying the scribe is now Colin. It's smart enough to actually say, no, we need to go and get Colin and pull him into the incident. So it's triggered the notification process via his preferences saying, hey, you've been requested as a responder in this incident and actually you've been assigned this role. So come and join us as a scribe. So we can really start to bring that organization and structure to, to the response process. And as well as looking at defining and assigning roles, Another common way of bringing organization to the incident response process is to start delegating tasks and tracking them. Who's doing what, how far through, what's the progress? And again, we can do that directly from, from Slack here. So I can just click on view tasks. And one of the things that that workflow did that we triggered a while back was it actually automatically generated a couple of tasks that we wanna make sure we carry out. One of which is checking what the customer impact is. So I've already done a little bit of that so far. So I'm going to sign that to myself and say that's in progress. Another one is confirming if they're, uh, you know, if, what the impacted regions are, if there are any other regions that are impacted. So I'm going to ask Virat to take a look at that one. And I don't think he started that. So I'm going to leave that as to do. So bringing organization in, making sure everybody has visibility of what their responsibilities are, how far the progress is made, and make sure we have a really structured approach to, to managing our response here. Just one other now, note. James, actually. before you go Sorry, through go ahead, the, Mandy. the tasks, are those then reflected in the PagerDuty UI as well? Yeah, so tasks is a very new capability. Yeah. At the moment, it's just in your Slack or Teams UI, okay. but they will shortly make their way into the main PagerDuty UI, of course. Awesome. Yeah, and actually, that's a really good question. If I'd nip back into the PagerDuty uh, UI, um, you can see we have a section here at the top for these incident roles, new, again, new, new capability. And if I open up the incident that we've been working on, you can see on the right-hand side here, we do get that outline of who's being assigned what. Um, and you can see we haven't assigned a communication lead, but we've got our incident commander and our scribe. Um, and you can see that we've added all those responders in through those automated workflows that we've been looking at. And for those of you who are familiar with our, our Slack integration already, we've got one thing which is, is, is a, a new addition, which is actually quite neat and, and quite helpful. Obviously, as an incident progresses, you're in a Slack channel. There's lots of chat and communication. I'm going to quickly have to scroll down and make my way to the bottom of the chat channel, right? Which means I lose the PagerDuty card. And all of the actions that I might want to take are on that PagerDuty card. Well, what we can do now is actually just pin that. So we will automatically pin the page duty card. So anything that you might want to do is always at your fingertips. All the page duty functionality and capabilities is right there for you. Now, um, one other thing just down here that's quite interesting as well. 
you can see here we've had a reminder come into the into the slack channel to actually go and push out a status update so this is an example of some of our advanced workflows that we have so conditionals loops and delays really advanced workflow actions to help you bring that structured approach and in this case I'm actually going to get that reminder every half an hour. It's going to loop continuously until the incident is resolved, just to make sure that we don't forget to push out those updates to the stakeholders um, at the cadence that we as an organization want. And of course, I can actually do that update directly from here just by clicking on send status update. So I don't even need to leave Slack. Or if I wanted to do it on the mobile app, I could, or in the page GT web UI too. And of course, we can use our status update templates to help structure those so that we pre-fill as much information as possible uh, to speed up that process. Now, one of the things I mentioned when I was talking through the slides at the start was around how we have a generative AI teammate in here to help us. Now, those of you who uh, were watching carefully may have noticed up at the top of the channel we had this section come in, PagerDuty Advance has joined and PagerDuty Advance is our Gen AI, Gen AI teammate to help us through the incident. So really common example of where I might wanna use this. Imagine this incident was escalated to a major incident. At that point, we pull in more people who don't have any background information as to what's happened. This could have been ongoing for an hour at that point. There might have been lots and lots of chat and stuff uh, done already. It could take me a while to get up to speed with that. But with PagerDuty Advance, I can just simply ask them, hey, can you, can you just catch me up? And of course, Advance has access to all of the information it needs from the initial alerts that triggered the incident, any actions that have been taken, what the chat in the Slack channel has been. So it can quickly summarize all of that information for me and get me up to speed. And then I can start interacting with it about various other topics as well. So typically in this scenario, one of the things you might want to understand is, well, have we seen this issue before recently? So what are our past similar incidents? And this is an AI ops capability, but PD Advance has access to all of that AI ops information. And you can see it's quickly brought me back. Here are the top three past similar incidents, but it's more than that, it's bringing me back what the resolutions of those incidents involved. So it's even now suggesting remediation to me. And reading through that, I can see that uh, previous, previous resolutions have involved rolling back a recent change. Okay, well, the next thing I probably think at that point is, well, have we had any recent changes? And of course, I can ask PD Advance that question. Again, it's AI Ops written pager duty does change correlation and has done for a long time, but PD Advance can bring that to you directly in your, in your chat channel. And you can see it's pulled back that actually, yeah, earlier on today, a few hours ago, we did push out a couple of changes. So given all this information, maybe that's uh, a remediation step that, that we want to take right now. And of course, you guessed it, if we're using PagerDT automation, we can start to automate these remediation actions as well. Now, whether it's running automation directly from Slack, so you can see I have access to my automation actions directly here, or whether it's running it on the mobile app as well. So you can see here, I have my automation actions and also my workflows too, because of course, PageDuty workflows can trigger automation as well. So you really can do automation on the go. So I have a, a rollback workflow, which I'm going to go ahead and run now. So that workflow has executed for me. And actually you can see in record quick time that workflow has run successfully and all services have been restored. So of course this is a demo, so I'm doing everything at hyperspeed, but I think you, you get the idea, right? We can start to bring all of the information that we would want in our, uh, to our fingertips through PagerDuty GT Advance and then start to automate to speed and execute things. Okay, so services have been restored, that's great. Let's go ahead and resolve this incident. And again, I can do that directly from the Slack channel. I wanna put a resolution note in like a good boy to make sure that we are knowledge sharing and democratizing all of that information. But of course, it's not the end of 
the life cycle, is it? It's the end of the incident. But as I mentioned before, we want to make sure that we're continuously learning, improving as an organization and making sure that we don't see this issue again. So I'm going to get on to the post-incident review process. But just before I do, you'll have seen there that one of the things Advanced does for me is it gives me a mini post-incident review directly to the Slack channel in a few seconds. So anybody who's been following along, if they're not technical or if they are technical, they get a quick summary of what happened, what was the diagnosis, what was the key moments, and how was it resolved. So you've got almost a starter there for your post-incident review already generated for you. But what I want to take a look at now is how we can uh, use Jelly to actually have a more in-depth post-incident analysis. So Jelly is a tool which allows us to perform post-incident reviews and then look at them holistically to start identifying trends and patterns throughout the organization. So the first thing I'm going to do is directly from the Slack channel here, I'm just going to import this all into Jelly. Now, quick word on terminology here. It's saying, do I want to create a new opportunity or add these messages to an existing one? In Jelly, we refer to post-incident reviews as opportunities because they are, of course, an opportunity for gaining insight and for learning. So I'm going to create a new one. And there's a couple of options. Do I want to take all the messages from this channel or specify a start and end time, who has access, etc.? You can see it automatically generates a random name for me. In reality, I'd probably want to give it a more meaningful name, but I quite like the fancy Lime incident, so I'm going to leave it as that for now. And I'm just going to click on Accept, and Jelly's going to go ahead, pull all the information from this channel, and create an opportunity for me. But now what's quite a common occurrence in this scenario, and as happened in this incident, is that it started off in one channel, and it escalated into a major incident, and so moved to another channel. And I probably want to include all that first channel's information in my opportunity in Jelly too. And so if I go back to my team channel where this incident originated, I can now from here just directly import all of this information into that same opportunity. So I'm just going to go and import this thread into Jelly and select which opportunity I want, which was the fancy Lime incident, which we just created, and go ahead and pull that into the same opportunity too. So we're not missing any crucial information. And if I actually go back to the, um, to the other channel where we started, you can see it's now successfully created that opportunity for us. So we can go ahead and take a look at it. Now, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of Jelly because you know we could do a session dedicated to this on its own, um, but some of the kind of key pieces of information that you might wanna see here are, well, first of all, automatically tagging with the relevant information that we need. So using AI, Jelly will automatically tag every opportunity with information that you can then use to analyze what's happening. So in this case, it's pulled out what technologies were involved, what services were involved. It could be what services were impacted, what teams, et cetera, et cetera. So you can then use those values to do your analysis. Um, you can see we've got those various different Slack channels as sources of information. And we break down the opportunity into various different parts. Um, what are the action items we want to do? Of course, integrate that fully with JIRA to, to track tasks in JIRA. Um, what were the people that were involved? But crucially, what was the narrative? So you can think of this as, as what happened, what was the timeline? And actually, this is where we start to do the meat of the, of the analysis. And of course, as you'd expect, we can use PagerGT AI to automatically build the narrative for us so we don't have to spend time consuming processes doing it ourselves. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because it takes a few minutes to do and we don't have that time. So in proper Blue Peter style, I'm going to move over to my demo environment and say, here's one I made earlier. And we can have a look at what that looks like once you've actually built that up. So over in the people tab, we can see who was involved, but crucially, what was their participation like? Because are we getting lots of people involved who aren't really contributing? If so, that's a waste of their time and waste of resources. Um, but when we look at the narrative, you can see here, it often isn't a linear process, right? We have various different phases, detection, diagnosis, repair, and any other key moments. But we can see that in this incident, we had some detection, had some diagnosis, uh, some attempted remediation, a bit more detection, a bit more attempted remediation, 
some further diagnosis. And then finally, we got to the actual remediation that fixed the issue. So we really build up a picture of what actually happened. And it's, it's, it's never linear, is it? And then the final thing I want to look at while we're in here is just calling out our learning center, because it's really, really helpful to have a tool that can help you build out these incident reviews um, and using AI to help you do that. But what's more interesting is actually building up a picture over time of what's happening across the organization as a whole. So what's the distribution of these opportunities look like? Who's participating in them? What technologies are we seeing across the, across the organization constantly pulling in problems for us? Um, or even what are the on-call patterns in relation to the, to the incidents that we're seeing? Are we constantly seeing escalations to people who weren't on call, which indicates where we have to pull in SMEs? And of course, you combine all this information with your pager duty analytics to give you a really comprehensive overview of how your organization is performing and where the gaps are, where the areas of improvement that you can work are. Whether we want to look at, you know, metrics like how's our MTTA, how's our MTTR, what's our uptime by service, you know, identify the problem services, or do we just want to look after the health of our team members? Do we want to see who's bearing the brunt of the workload? Is, is one of, do we have a superhero on the team that's always getting called out in the middle of the night? Um, when are those escalations happening? How much time are people spending on call? What are people's acknowledgement rates like, et cetera? All of this data and information is contained in PagerDuty and we can use it to start improving and moving to, from being a reactive organization right through to being more preventative. Okay. I think that's about it from me, from what I wanted to show you today from a demo standpoint. Um, I don't know if we've got any questions or any comments in the chat that we need to address, Mandy. We, we don't, but I kind of wanted to summarize for folks like all of the integration touch points that you have in this demo, because there's a lot of things here that reach out to other systems that folks hopefully find useful and interesting. So like you've got Slack and you've got ServiceNow and whatever's putting your alerts in in the first place to, to help folks, regardless of what team inside their organization needs to interact with this particular incident, um, which seems like it would be very helpful for folks who have different lenses and different ways of working across things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there were lots and lots of different touch points with other tools and systems, right? So when we first looked at the alerts table coming through, these alerts would be coming from not just one source, right? Multiple different sources. And that's one of the great things about AOPS is we are doing that single pane correlation yeah. of ingesting events, no matter the source and pulling them together. Um, so it could be five, six, 10 different tools that are sending us these events. And then of course, like you mentioned, our system of record, our ticketing tool, making sure we're doing that. We looked at the chat and collaboration tools. So Teams and, and Slack, of course, crucial tools, because that's where the, that's where the work happens typically. Um, and then of course, follow up actions with Jira, right? Most people use Jira for tracking, tracking work and managing tasks. So of course we have integrations there as well. Yeah. And that's only touching a few of the integrations we have. There's so, so many that, that we could reference there. Absolutely. It does such a, <clears throat> it, it means that the, the whole workflow can be so expanded, I think. So to, into, so to, to integrate, but also to encompass all the other things that you're thinking about when you're dealing with an incident and like you said, your system of record and then any kind of post-incident follow-up actions, work that has to be done to remediate things, code that should be prioritized so we don't see this incident again, please. Um, just kind of like circling through all of those things to, to complete the incident as a entire effort is super important. Yeah, there's so many parts to that. There's so many pieces that you you want to make sure are happening to run an effective incident response process. And if you leave all that to manual human effort, so much, something's yeah. going to get missed or things are going to take forever. Um, when really, as a human, you want to be focusing on how we're going to fix this problem. What's gone wrong? Let's fix it. Um, so yeah, let PagerGT take care of all of that for you. Yeah, definitely. 
Awesome. Well, this is great. There's so much stuff. Every time I see this demo, there's something new in it. Like, oh, I haven't seen the tasks part before. So that's great. Um, because I think the last time I got through the whole one, it was maybe early July. So all this stuff being added, all this stuff to be curious about, ask about, look around in your platform to see what might be helping uh, you get your incidents solved in a better way. So James, this is great. This is always good to see all the interesting components and how I think flows together for folks to make everything better and easier. So thank you for joining us today. No, uh, you're welcome. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope everybody who, uh, who logged into the webinar enjoyed it too um, and look forward to, to hearing from you. Yeah, absolutely out there. If you are a PagerD user and you haven't seen these things before up close and personal, please contact your account team. They would love to show it to you uh, on, uh, on a personalized demo if you're up for that. If you have any other general questions and you'd like to get in touch with us, you can always email our team, community-team at pagerd.com and we can get your queries to the right place. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so yeah, that'll conclude today's uh, webinar. We're super glad you were able to join us and uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks for uh, yet another demo and there's the webinar coming up. So um, hopefully you've registered for those. And in the meantime, we'll wish everybody an uneventful day and we'll talk to you later.